Okie doke, so this episode, the first thing we are going to do is we are going to convert our grids so that they can hold lists, so we can store more data, and we can have walls and stuff like that. So uh, the first thing we are going to do is go into the create event of the map editor object. This line here, DS grid clear, floor grid one. Uh, we can't use that anymore because we're going to store, we need it to store lists. So we have this. Let me zoom in. So we have this double full loop that's going to go through the, the whole size of the grid, create a list for every cell. And for each list we create, we're going to initialize the data in that list. And all we're seeing here is if the part we're setting inside the list is the floor then we're going to set it to one because one is grass and zero is empty and for everything else like the walls and the decoration we're going to set it to empty and then we're going to store the pointer to that list inside the grid and that's how we're going to do it uh, this stuff is going to be in the script in the future but for now it's just a bit easier to have it in the create event uh, we've commented out this line that we had before and that should be it for the create event. So now if we go into the step event of the map editor, we're just going to update this region here, the change current tile to tile to place. So previously uh, when we were just changing one cell, we only had to update the cell in the grid because we were just storing a single number single bit of data now that we have a list we have to grab the list from the cell in the grid first and update the list with our new piece of data uh, remember that tile part to place could be ground west wall north wall decoration so this is going to help us when we do that next when we're, when we're able to actually add walls which we'll do in a minute uh, and the same for this region uh, previously we just set the cell in the grid but we have to get the list and update the list that's all we're doing differently and the last thing to do that really has no effect on the things we can do in the game right now but it's going to help us for later uh, let me just zoom out so inside our double full loop uh, we now have to get the list from the floor grid and we're going to draw we have a new for loop here. It's going to check every entry in this list. And if there is something to draw, i.e. if the entry in data is not equal to zero, then we're going to draw it. So this is going to run uh, like four times, basically. So this is new. This is commented out and replaced with this. This is new. This is commented out and replaced with this. And this should be the same. And don't forget the curly brackets. And I also commented out the testing numbers because uh, this, if we run this right now, let's, uh, let's actually comment it back in and let's run the game. I'll show you what it does. Zero. Oh, sorry. Uh, what I meant to show was uh, floor grid. So previously um, we were displaying, well, we're still displaying the contents of floor grid, but previously it would show us the image index of the ground to draw. But now if we run the game again, it's going to show us the number of the list. Because when you create a list, the first one you create gets a number of zero and the next one gets a number of one, two, three. So uh, now the cells in the grid are storing the pointer to the list. That's what this is about. And to actually display uh, what floor tile is uh, in that cell, we have to check the list within floor grid. So tile parts dot ground there we go so now just by adding this on the end 
we're accessing the, li the list that's inside of this cell. If we run the game, you can see it's now showing us the, the value of the ground we want to use. So let's change it to dirt. Some more dirty. I'm not quite sure the difference between those two. And we and if we uh, go back to this one or this, I think it's number five or six, and we hold down shift and click, we get a load of fives. So you should still have the same functionality as we did before, except this time we are accessing a list as opposed to the cell in the grid. Okay, so if we go into the step, we're actually going to implement being able to add walls and decoration to our maps now. So in the uh, change tile to place region, we are going to add a few no new things. So if we're not holding down shift, then we're just going to change the index of the current tile part. Otherwise, if we are holding down shift, then pressing right is going to change which part we're drawing. So if we're on floor and we press right, then we're going to be changing the west wall. So this is new, this is new, and all of this is new. Let me just zoom in, sorry. So uh, this is new and all of this is new. Zoom back out and same for left. So if we're not holding shift, this line is new. Do this as normal, same as before. Otherwise, change the tile part. And what we're doing as well is whenever we reset, whenever we change the tile part, we're going to reset the index of the sprite we're using. Um, there's negatives and pluses to this. The, the plus is that uh, we won't get an error or a crash if uh, tile to place is greater than the number of images in the sprite we're trying to draw because we might have more or less ground tiles or sorry ground images than we do uh, wall images uh, the negative is that if you're doing walls uh, and you change the parts you have to uh, get back to the wall piece you, you, you were using before so uh, you may or may not want to use this it just depends on a few things. But anyway, let's run the game and we can actually uh, do more to our floor. So uh, I'm going to hold down shift and press right and press right again without shift. And I have a wall I can place. So I'm just going to drag it across there. If I press shift and right again and get to this wall, I can place it there. If I press shift and right again, I've got trees I can place. I'm going to place a few there. And, and that's it, we can now change a couple of things in our maps. Okay, so the next thing we are gonna do is allow ourselves to switch between the different biomes as well. And for that, we're gonna need to import some more sprites. So underneath where I have the farm folder, I've got a barn and I have barn floor, barn wall west, barn wall north and barn deco. And for the city, I have city floor, city wall west, city wall north, and city deco. So then we want to go into the controller object, into the create event, and we have to update our biome sprites region because we only have uh, entries for the farm. So we're going to add it for the barn and for the city. Make sure you update the second dimension for the barn, for the city, for all the entries, and that the sprites match the tile part stuff. So ground, floor, west, west, north, north, deco, deco. As long as you've got that down, you can go to the next thing, which is, uh, it's kind of hard to identify sometimes which biome you're on. So we're just gonna have an array with text that tells us what biome we're on basically. So that, that's all this is for. And then 
Uh, if we go into the draw GUI first of OBJ Map Editor, uh, this these three lines are going to tell us what biome we're currently on. And then in the step event of the map editor, we have a brand new region called change biome. And all we're going to do is if we press T or R, we're going to change the value of current biome. And it's exactly the same code as when we're changing tile to place like this stuff here, except we are checking to see if we're less than biomes.last or greater than or equal to zero for pressing T for increasing and R for decreasing. And that should be it. If we run the game, we should now be able to change the biome. So because if we if we if we're in the farm and we want to do walls and stuff, you know, we can't really do much and there's, there's no buildings. So what if I decided, okay, well I've got some walls. I'm going to change this to uh, a city, so then I'm going to press T or press R to go back to the last entry. And <laughs> I've got some doors because um, what's happening is we still have the same data as the previous biome. So this, the, the same index for uh, the hedge in the farm outside, like this one, is the same index as a door for the city. So uh, we don't really want to always do that. So what we're going to do is for the final thing is we're going to reset some of our variables every time we change the biome. So we're in the step of OBJ main and all we're going to do is whenever we press T or R, we're going to reset tile part to place to ground and uh, tile to place to zero and also we're going to go through our grid each cell in the grid get the list and set the ground part of the list to one and everything else to zero so this is new and this is pretty much the same that's in the create event uh, we are going to start using scripts soon but for now I just want to show you how to do this so let's run the game And if I just change to walls and place them all around, and switch biomes, then there's nothing there. Do the same thing. Uh, let's add doors on every part of it. Switch biomes, there's nothing there. We can still do everything as before. Awesome, so uh, thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.